Hey everybody, it's 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here. It is the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video, the Thursday evening edition here on the fourth day of January. And it's been a little bit like Groundhog Day so far this month and this year. Every day has been kind of cloudy and kind of ho-hum and... Uh, Today was the coldest day of the bunch. We started the day as expected with a few slick spots out there this morning. We had some uh, black ice and a little dusting of snow that made for a, a few slick areas and most of the day just kind of gray. Now we were kind of expecting some holes in the clouds to appear this afternoon. A few did appear in Western PA, but for the most part, the clouds were dominant this afternoon. And as a result, temperature didn't move much. In fact, we stayed in the 20s for air temperatures for most of the day, the wind chill while not crazy low, was, you know, as low as the middle and upper teens for a lot of our Thursday. Because the sun didn't come out this afternoon, it didn't get quite as blustery as it could have. If the sun had come out, the atmosphere got would have gotten a little well, more well mixed and uh, would have been even more blustery during the second half of the day. But yeah, the blanket of clouds still overhead. Now, I do think that the clouds will try to thin some later tonight, heading into our Friday. And I think Friday will be the brightest day of the week. And it's going to be a cold start to our Friday as well. We'll talk about those temperatures in just a moment. The beginnings of our big weekend system for the East Coast out here across uh, parts of the southern Rockies, southern Plain states. Doesn't look like much right now, but it's getting set to uh, pick up some steam and come east. And already the National Weather Service has hoisted winter storm watches from the uh, higher elevations in western North Carolina through the Blue Ridge Parkway, the spine of the Appalachians, right up through Pennsylvania and into New England as well. Now this is going to be more of an ice concern down here. It of course is going to be more snow as you go up towards State College, Williamsport, Scranton, the Poconos, and then over towards the greater Boston area as well. For us though, it is going to be a near miss. Well, it's not going to miss the cold. It's going to be uh, the coldest start to a day that we've had so far in 2024, Friday morning, with some places registering upper teens. We'll crack freezing though by midday, and again, with the aid of some sunshine, I think we'll sneak into the mid-30s, right about where we should be at this time of the year. So tomorrow is, all things considered, a winner. What about the weekend? All right, here's some of the uh, latest trends with our modeling. We're going to pause things Saturday morning. And at this point, it's probably snowing in Cincinnati, Parkersburg, Marietta. Rain, cold rain down towards Charleston. And what, you know, this looks a little intimidating, right? It looks like it's all coming this way, right? Well, not so fast. Uh, it's going to take more of a southeasterly jog as we go into the afternoon. So while we will get grazed, we're kind of on the back edge of this. Um, by far and away, the meat of this storm, the big problems are going to be out here and then eventually up into here. And for us, this is just kind of a, a grazing it's going to be enough maybe to cause a few slick spots, but all things considered, not a big deal. That storm system uh, impacts New England then Saturday night into Sunday. For us, another weak disturbance comes our way on Sunday. And, you know, I, I do think there's going to be flurries around for a lot of the day on Sunday. It's going to look maybe a little snow globy at times, but it's going to have a hard time sticking for a lot of the daylight hours. Um, we'll get above freezing, and I'm just not expecting much in the way of impacts from this on Sunday. But occasionally we're going to have some... Some you know snowflakes falling from the sky, and it'll look uh, kind of wintry, at least in terms of the snow falling from the sky. On the ground, though, uh, not expecting a lot of problems on Sunday. So our computer model spread at this point. Uh, the graph model is kind of this light blue line, uh, still kind of holding on to the idea that someone tries to get maybe an inch worth of snow. Um, most of this uh, you know, on the graph would be Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. A few of our models are actually indicating a little bit better chance of maybe a little light accumulations late Saturday night into Sunday morning with that next disturbance and maybe some light snow or flurries coming in. But the big storm itself um, will produce some six inch amounts uh, from central and northern PA up through the Poconos, the Catskills, over towards Boston, Nashua, places like that. Boy, tough forecasting along the I-95 corridor. You know, I used to be on the radio in New York City in my AccuWeather days, and, you know, radio stations in New York City don't just cover Manhattan. I mean, you're going to go from, in parts of the greater New York City area, nothing with rain, just a cold rain, to you know, half a foot worth of, of snow. Um, so that's a tough one. Philadelphia's kind of tough as well. Do think for the uh, Steelers-Ravens game down towards Baltimore, it's going to be just a cold rain for a lot of that area. Uh, not on TV here locally, but the Patriots have a home game Sunday afternoon up in... Uh, the suburbs of Boston. That'll be a snow game early Sunday afternoon. For us, though, again, coating to at most an inch Saturday afternoon, early Saturday evening, maybe some candy coatings then uh, late Saturday night into Sunday morning with that next disturbance pushing through, but again, not expecting big impacts all weekend long. Temperatures 
a little above freezing, both Saturday and Sunday, 37 Saturday and 36 degrees as we wrap up that first weekend of the year on Sunday. All right, let's take a peek at the uh, midweek system. This is going to be a stronger area of low pressure. We've got the isobars plotted up on the map this evening, lines of equal pressure. When you see a lot of those packed together, that usually means you got a fair amount of wind, and with the strength of this low, there's going to be a lot of wind on all sides. Now, the heavy snow part of this will be to the north and west of the low center, so this will be a pretty good snow event uh, for parts of Chicago and Milwaukee, Green Bay, close call in St. Louis. Um, Detroit could do kind of well out of this. For us, though, um, while Tuesday morning could be tricky uh, with snow and maybe some sleet and freezing rain, I do expect still a changeover to some snow, uh, to some rain, I should say, it, by midday at the uh, earliest, and then it, maybe it waits till the afternoon. But at some point on Tuesday, we're going to see that warmer air surging in, and whatever ha will have accumulated first thing in the morning on Tuesday likely gets washed away with temperatures in the 40s and some rain and a gusty wind Tuesday afternoon. And as we go to Tuesday night and Wednesday, our low continues chugging to the north and east. We'll get on the back side of this. Look at all these isobars Wednesday morning. It's going to be a blustery day on Wednesday. Now, there's no real Arctic air associated with this system. So while it is going to be colder on Wednesday, we're not going to go into the deep freeze. You know, we're just going to kind of hang out, I think, in the 30s on Wednesday. But the wind will make it feel colder. Uh, any snow Wednesday will be pretty low impact, I think, because I think we're going to spend a lot of the day above freezing. Uh, and so, yeah, there's probably going to be some snowflakes mixed with rain showers here and there. Best chance for raindrops still lingering, maybe Wednesday morning. Maybe just snow showers Wednesday afternoon. But either way, should be pretty low impact in terms of wintry precipitation. All right, today's 8 to 14 day outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. The Arctic hounds are going to be let loose, it looks like, as we go into... Mid-January. Now, the core of the cold is likely to be out here. Billings and the Dakotas and Minneapolis and places like that. It's going to be cold around here, around eastern Ohio and western PA. But to me, it doesn't look like anything crazy for what is climatologically the coldest time of the year. Mid-January is when our averages bottom out. And so, you know, you really need a really cold air mass to, to see big temperature anomalies in mid-January. And to me, at this point, I don't see that as being... You know, all that likely, at least in the short term. What about the longer range? You know, it's interesting. We look, you know, not only here near the ground and up a few thousand feet, but when it comes to winter weather and possible dislodges of Arctic air, we oftentimes look way up in the atmosphere, up in the stratosphere, almost outer space. This is a look at uh, the heights and the anomalies uh, coming up in about, so oh, five or six days, up in, high up in the stratosphere. And we're looking down on the northern hemisphere here. Here's the North Pole. And what we're looking at here is a warming event in the stratosphere. And that's going to kind of split the polar vortex in two. So that uh, about a week from now, we have one lobe of the polar vortex on the other side of the globe over into uh, northern Asia, northern Europe, and then another lobe down here in Canada. And when you see the polar vortex splitting like this, um, that will dislodge true Arctic air. And so I think, uh, you know, we're going to see the Arctic Express coming out of the, the, the northern latitudes as we go into mid-January. Uh, it probably will pull back some later in January, and then you know, still pretty high amount of confidence that February is going to be uh, a fair, fair amount colder than last February for sure, and maybe even colder than December and January this winter. This is going to be a pretty stormy period, so even though Saturday is kind of a, you know, nothing burger for us, and our snow is going to get washed away by rain coming up on Tuesday. Uh, if you're longing for snow, um, I don't think we're going to have a shortage of opportunities coming up in the uh, next several weeks. I think this is going to be an active pattern full of chances for wintry fun in eastern Ohio and western PA. We'll talk about uh, next week's storm in a little more detail once again coming up on Friday evening's edition of this same video. Same time, same place. I will see you then.